Welcome, welcome, and welcome again to the F3 Podcast, where we discuss all things pertaining to faith, family, and finance. Okay, we got a good one for you today. We are your hosts. I am Dr. Lionel M. Blair Sr., and I'm sitting next to the sainted mother herself, <laughs> Jesus Jr. Oh, hey, Lord. Shabbat. <laughs> Personify. In the flesh. My, my wife, <laughs> Dr. Jadman Blair. You know, the Bible does say, though, that uh, Jesus was the word made flesh, That's and true. we're supposed to be conformed to his image. And as he is, so are we in this world. So everything Jesus is, we're supposed to become. That's very true. So I ain't technically lying. No. But, <laughs> you know, still trying to keep me stoned. Anyway, welcome to the F3 podcast. Thank you for joining us. If this is your first time with us, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Hit the notification bell so you'll be notified every time we air a new episode. Be sure to check out the description box and for our audio listeners look in the show notes you will see links for how you can support this podcast for some of our other products and services and you'll see a link there where you can leave a message so if you have a question you want us to answer here on the show or a topic suggestion please don't hesitate to leave us a message because your topic or question might be the next topic of the show so we got a good one today stop eating your seed money matters now Sowing and reaping is a biblical principle that yes. we all know. But what happens when you look around and you don't see the seed that you thought you had to be sowing? So we're going to talk about this topic and we're going to talk about how this principle can begin to really unlock many things in your life, yes. both naturally as well as spiritually. But I want you to listen close to find out what happened to your seed, how to get it back and how to break the cycle of losing your seed before you even have a chance to sow it for your harvest. So I'm going to kick this over to you so you can kind of help the people understand. Now, when we say eat your seed, what are we talking about? Basically taking what you're supposed to sow and spending it on yourself. That part, that part. You know, because see, his. Here's the thing, and I got a whole teaching about mammon. Yes. And people yes. wonder why sowing is so important. And I'll get up here and teach it more in depth at another time. Yeah, we'll have to do that in the coming weeks. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll do that in the coming weeks. But mammon protects, I, I, I'm sorry, your giving protects you from mammon. Did mm -hmm. you know that? It's not always just about. Uh, reaping what you sow, even though that is a principle, okay, that's outlined throughout the, the entirety of the scriptures, okay, and if you sow, you should expect to reap, all right, because that is a universal law and principle, right, all right, but when you, sometimes God will test you before he promotes you by mm -hmm. putting a seed in your hand. That's true. Come on. But see, it, here's the thing, though, Apostle. Mm -hmm. He only gives seed to the sower. Ooh. I like that. So if you don't, if you never have anything to give, that's because you have not taken on the nature of a sower. My drop. Some people may say, well, Ooh, I helps peoples. <laughs> giving ain't just financial. Giving ain't just financial. I can give them my. I can tie I can them give my, my time. time. The you, people, people love to give their time, right? I can give up my time. First of all, you don't tie time. It's dumb. That, That's that not even biblical. biblical. Even before <laughs> it was money, and they were tithing of you know th of the first fruits and different things, and they were giving the tithe of their garden of, of dill and mint, agriculture. And cumin. It was agriculture. It wasn't even time then. No, it's not. Gift, it was something of substance. Sowing, physical to give, tithing, first fruits. None of it was ever time. That that's one thing I think we all can agree on. Some people, you know, they 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 have different opposing views, but one thing we can all agree on is it was never time biblically. Time is like a seed, but time ain't tithe. No. Okay, let, 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 let's, let's stop time that. Time is a whole sociological construct, but that's for another setting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But but if you're not a sower. Right. That's because, you know, if you that, don't, God, mm. God don't put seed in your hand if you're not a sower. That part. 
you know, I don't care. I don't care if it's one dollar. Hello. You have something to give, and Jesus pays attention to that because there's a there's there's a passage of scripture where there was a woman that gave the least. They should get like a penny or something, and Jesus said that this woman gave more than everybody who gave more than her because that because of what she had left. I, I gotta pause you right there because Go that's that's one of those one of my gripes. One of those things that we do in church religiously because we think it makes us sound humble and caring and considerate. And we think we have the character of Christ when we say this, but it pisses me off. And God, we want to bless those who want to give but weren't able. We have to stop doing that because you know what I found? Yeah, it's a religious and, habit. And, a religious it is a habit. religious habit, but it pisses, I've done it. <laughs> it, it pisses me off. Why? Not because somebody wanted to, but they didn't have. It pisses me off because in the time, and I didn't grow up in church as a lot of people say. But one thing that I've realized 99% of the people that don't give, they had something to give. They will go right through somebody's drive through on the way home. Come on. That's it. it, it they will get them a, 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 a 10 for 10, 5 for 5. 99% of the people who we're blessing that didn't have to give, they actually had to give, but they just held it for themselves. Shoot, I got to I'm, I'm give me something to eat on my way home. I'm going to do Am I saying don't do for yourself? No, but we have to stop blessing, saying bless those who, who wanted to give but weren't able when we're really blessing stingy people. Everybody has something to give. Well, you don't know that. Um, in most settings, everybody has something to give. Whether you got a dime, a penny, a quarter. Some people, well, I don't, I don't want to give that. That's no money. No, it's not. But at least it's something. Right. Unless you don't have, you don't clean your whole house. You don't have no pennies in that junk drawer because you know, I don't know. We got the drawer where we just kind of throw stuff. If you, unless you don't have any pennies in that drawer, then you can say, okay, well, I honestly don't have anything to give. Right. Most people well bless those who wanted to give they weren't able. You got something. You got something. Ladies, if you go through your purses, you're gonna find you about fifty, sixty dollars once you add all that stuff. Minimum. Once you add all that stuff up, five dollars here, twenty dollars there, some change there. Stop saying, Oh, well, I wish I could, but I can't. That's the that's why you're not being viewed as a sower. That's why God's not giving the seed to the sower because you only out a little bit you have. You gonna make sure that you can go through somebody's drive through. One thing I notice about a seed sower, God always looks out for them. Yes, always. No, listen, I'm I'm for real. We we've been sowing seed our entire marriage. Yes. Okay, we've been married almost a decade now, and we've been sowing seed our entire marriage. Okay, we put thousands of dollars into the kingdom of God. All right. But but listen, let me tell you something. God always looks out for a giver. Mm -hmm. Always. Because that universal law begins to work for you. Yes. Okay. Uh, 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 you don't understand the power of giving. Money is a medium of exchange, right? Mm -hmm. You think the power is in the paper. Now, the power is in what the paper or the coin represents. Okay. It's a medium of exchange. Whatever you give into, you have the right to retrieve from. Mm -hmm. That's why you also got to be careful where you sow. Huh? So whatever you put your money towards, that's what you get out of it, right? And you give according to the proper price that is on that particular thing. You don't just go into the grocery store and expect to pay uh, 50 cent for a tomahawk steak. No. Okay. The problem is, come on, we don't give the the right price and the right honor. That part. Now, the amount only matters depending on what you have left. That part. Okay. So, mm. if I have five thousand dollars, and I put, and I put a hundred dollars. In that basket. That ain't no money. That ain't no money. <laughs> okay. That is that's actually dishonorable. Mm -hmm. First of all, that's not even a okay, that's not even a tenth. Mm -mm. You understand? If I have five thousand dollars, okay, 
the 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 tenth of that is what five hundred. It's five hundred. Mm -hmm. My minimum should my minimum seed should be five hundred. Some people may say, you know, well, you know, we're not under the law. We don't tithe. You know, we're not under the law and all that. Yeah, I can, I can, I can debate with you and all that. I, yeah, I can, I can understand why you say that. I can get down with you with some of that stuff now. I can. All right. That hundred dollars is two percent. <laughs> two percent. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus. So you only sold 2% of $5,000 and wonder why God ain't really blessing you like that. Or wonder why God ain't really moving for you the way that you want. Mm. See, when you sow seed, man, you don't understand the power of that Come thing. on. Well, well, I've given and nothing has happened. No, 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 no. The, mm -mm. the problem is that, and I said, this is another teacher too, because we don't know how to identify a harvest. That too. Okay, we sow seed and think money going to magically appear in our account. Or somebody just going to come and just hand us the check, which they can do that. Money can appear in your account. That's I've right. released money miracles. Okay, and I've seen miracles hit, 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 I mean, by the hundreds mm -hmm. of dollars hit people's accounts. Okay, I've seen thousands of dollars in increase. Okay, hit people. Debts paid supernaturally, all of that. I believe all that. But you can't live off money miracles your entire life. Right. Okay. So, but when you begin to sow, and I mean sow, uh, sow with a good heart, things begin to work for you. And see, the, the thing is you miss your harvest because your harvest can come in the form of an opportunity. Mm. It can come with a connection, mm -hmm. and the devil fights those things. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, uh, you, your harvest could be, uh, um, um, you know, who you meet, where you go, mm -hmm. the type of doors and opportunities that open up for you. But you expect your harvest to come one way, and this is how most people miss their harvest. Yep, go back to that episode. Yeah, we got an episode on that. You know, so so. So if you are not a giver, mm. you need to ask God, Lord, make me a sower, make me a sower. And then, and then after that, you have to start disciplining your giving. Mm -hmm. You have to purposely set aside to give. I remember there were people that didn't have no jobs and they found a way to give. That part. I was like, I didn't even want to, I didn't even want to take their money. Right. I didn't want to take their money, but God spoke to me. He said, no, you have to. Mm. You have to take it because if you don't, you're going to mess up what I'm trying to do in your life. They're wrestling and they're struggling now. They're wrestling and they're struggling now. Mm -hmm. But but what I'm getting ready to do in their life, they need this. Yes. They need this. You know, I you know, you know, a, a lot of a lot of times preachers are accused of taking from the poor. Right. We're accused of robbing the poor and taking from the poor, not even realizing we be wrestling with God in private because we don't want to take the seed of nobody that's poor. That part. Okay. But see, if you understand the principle, my glory to God, if you understand the principle of sowing and reaping and what that seed does and what that seed does in the spiritual world concerning you. Right. You begin to sow because see, here's the thing: when when they sold into Jesus's ministry, he stood right by the offering basket and paid attention to everything everybody sold. Mm. So for all y'all who think the pastor ain't supposed to keep up with the money, right, ain't supposed to see what I'm giving. Somebody gonna see, gonna see it anyway, baby. I look at everything that coming up. Okay, huh? I pay attention to the money because Jesus paid attention to his money. Okay. I pay attention to the money. You understand? You know, the workman. Okay, I'm not going to get on that. <laughs> but but the point is, again, when you are a seed sower, God looks out for you. Mm -hmm. See, people wonder, okay, how y'all get to where y'all are? For, first of all, our whole journey has been by faith. Mm -hmm. That's another episode. <laughs> 
You know what that is. But that, I think we need to talk about our faith journey because I, I, I yeah, I, I we'll think. talk about that going into the yeah. next season. Yep. Yeah. I'll be good. But it takes faith to sow. Mm -hmm. Sow in faith. Sow believing. And again, a lot of times certain things don't open immediately. But when they do open, my God, it's a big, huge door. So, so, so again, you, you, you got to, you got to be determined, right? That you're going to be a sower, right? Because see, when you give, okay, what you give into, if it be of the kingdom, then you begin to abstract from the kingdom things that you need. Mm -hmm. Okay. But see, a lot of times, again, we don't put the right price on it. And, and and for you, it could be $1,000. And for someone else, it could be $50. It depends on what you have left. It depends on what you have left. See, there's an attack on seed sowing because we got um, imposters out there. Right. You know, there's an attack on seed sowing, you know. And, 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 and honestly, we got some pastors that are getting down with it too. You're a dummy. I've seen it. I've seen it on social media. It doesn't You're a make dummy. any sense. If you are a pastor, you speak against so and seed, you are a dummy. All right. Because these are the things that God has always used to fund the ministry. Okay. These are things that always you, God has always used to fund the ministry. He's always, listen, uh, 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 it is biblical to get the people to sow into the ministry. Not using your own personal finances. Remember in Matthew chapter 10, Jesus told him, don't bring your personal money. And I'm paraphrasing. He said, don't bring no gold, no silver, no purse, no script. He said, for the workman is worthy of his high. In other words, places where you sow, let the people give. Let the people give. Huh? And if you go into a house and be worthy, let your peace rest upon it. If you're not be worthy, let your peace come. How do you know the house is worthy? Because they accommodate the prophet. They accommodate the apostle. They give. Okay. That part. Huh? Come on. Givers, givers get God's attention. And, you know, I used to be against these pastors. Um that pay special attention to bigger givers until I, uh, until I saw this principle here. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Ooh, you done made somebody mad. You done pissed somebody off right there. Baby, you sold $5,000 here. You finna get a phone call. But see, here's the thing that I noticed. <laughs> I was talking to, I was talking to another leader about this recently, about the 80-20 principle. Now, this is not exact. This is not something in the Bible. But most, if you've been pastoring for at least five years, I'm sure you've noticed this. 80% of the problems come from people who give the least. They give to about 20% or less. Right. The people who give the most, they call you the least. They have the least amount of problems. It come doesn't on. all. You know that's how it works out. The people that are constantly in the in the pastor's office, constantly need prayer, constantly needing this, this or that, they don't hardly give or contribute anything. Right. Now we're not saying they're wrong if they're in transition because obviously you come in a certain way and then you grow and mature as you go. Right. But generally, this is how it goes. The people who are sowing large amounts, they're doing a lot of volunteering, they're doing a lot of supporting. Yeah. They don't need the type of counseling, prayer, and labor and legwork and from the pastor or the ministerial staff that the person who's barely giving a dime needs. It becomes taxing. Why? Go ahead. You know why? Because where your treasure is, where your heart is. That's right. So what? how people handle their money reveals where their heart is mm -hmm. with God. And where their heart is on God issues. So, so that's why they're not as needy and stuff. People who give the most, a lot of times, they appreciate the most. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, you have some of them. You have, you have that, some outliers. You have those that <laughs> that small group who who think they can control the pastor because they get the most. Yep, financial. Witchcraft. That's a small group, though. That's a small. Oh, we're group. not gonna have this event. I'm not giving this. Oh, we we we're gonna do this instead. We're gonna we're gonna use 
Bob's potato salad instead of sister watermelons. Well, I'm not donating five hundred dollars to the church cookout. People do silly stuff like that. It sounds ridiculous, but people do things like that. Yeah, yeah. But but you know, God pays attention. See, I gotta go back to this mm -hmm. because see, this is this is strictly in the Bible. Yeah, this is stuff that Jesus did. You know, you know, Jesus. Whatever Jesus stayed in anybody's house, he stayed in the rich man's house. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jesus did not stay in no little itty bitty little house. Mm. Okay, okay, you understand. This mm, is why. Mm. This is why you know when we go places now, we have a standard for a hotel. Yeah. Listen, you ain't gonna put the man of God in no Motel Six or no. Motel Six and Motel Eight. No, I, none of them. All of the above. Six, none eight, of them. ten, twelve. <laughs> none of them. <laughs> I ain't bougie or none of that kind of stuff, but you ain't going to put me in no low-grade little hotel either. We got to be able to lay down without worrying about something crawling on us when yeah. the light go off. Yeah, <laughs> for real. You know, I don't ask for much, but I ask for that. Okay, give me a decent hotel. Okay, bless God. It don't got to be $500 a night, but, but, but if it's like $50 a night, I know it ain't no good. Red flags. Red, red flags. Okay. <laughs> okay. But the other thing that I want to talk about, and yes. a lot of people like to overlook this, uh -huh. I want to talk about people eating their seed through disobedience and irresponsibility. Uh oh. Because this is another issue that goes on a lot in the body. People, oh, I want to sow, I want to sow. Then when you encounter a problem that you created, now you don't want to sow because now you've got to fix this problem that you made. Oh, well, uh, I, I forgot to pay my bill and, and now they added an extra hundred dollars. So now I'm not going to be able to sell. So you, 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 you're robbing the kingdom because of your, you could have just paid it on time. Notice yeah, I didn't say they didn't have it. I said they forgot. Right. That, there's the difference. God will never ask you for something you don't have. That part. So you forgot. So now you got late fees. Now you got all this extra stuff. Now, now you can't sow into the kingdom and be a blessing because you've got to use the funds instead to cover your irresponsibility because you forgot. You got a speedy ticket. <laughs> now you got to pay that. Now you got to go to court. Now you got to do all of this. You see how that sometimes that stuff adds up. Mm -hmm. it, it starts to add up, but we've got to deal with it. We've got to deal with it. You got something you decided you want to go do. Lower to God. Well, you know, I was going to get my ties, but I'm going on vacation. So I I, I had to pick back We've up. We've heard this before, yeah, too. Yeah, literally. <laughs> I, I'm going to pick back up when I get back in town, though, because, you know, I'm going on vacation. So I'm going to need that much. Can you imagine if pastors were, you know, I'm here to, to cover you and pray with you. I'm here to watch over your soul, but I'm going on vacation. So I'm going to pick back up watching your soul when I get back. You just, you just go out the fifth. <laughs> a lot of times we have to. <laughs> Can you imagine if pastor said that? A lot of times, even on vacation, we still working. Mm -hmm. That's just the life of a leader. Yeah. You know, sometimes we still handle stuff, even a little minute stuff. We're still handling ministry stuff on vacation a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Usually by email, but it's still something. Yeah, it's still something. You know, uh, 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 there's no retirement from this, okay? Like, once once you're in this, you're always in this. Even if you become emeritus, you still you still do work. Right. <laughs> you, you, you still do work, okay? You still do you you still do pastoral work if you even if you're a retired pastor. Now I yes, but I want to get back to this irresponsibility part. Yes. Because for a lot of newer believers, a lot of younger believers, both spiritually and naturally, the irresponsibility and the disobedience is what plays a role. And you look at some of the more seasoned saints in the church, you know, and, and well, man, they always give and they always support. That's because they have learned the lessons of irresponsibility yeah. and disobedience that you're now learning. So it would really behoove you to go sit and learn from their wisdom. How did you overcome this, this problem? You have got to determine in yourself that the needs of the kingdom oh. are a priority yes. in your life. Oh. 
Now, yes, one indeed. thing you can say about the Caesar saints, some of them might be a little rigid, some of them might be a little re religious, but they're not going to shortchange God by any means. And I have a great respect for that. Them old mothers, I'm telling you, <laughs> they, they had their flaws, especially some of the old holiness movements and stuff like that. That's very restrictive to women and the women be mean as I don't know what. OK, but 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 a lot of the old mothers they were givers too. Right. They, they always paid them tithes. They always paid. And listen, that's that's one of the reasons why God always showed up for the mothers too. Yeah. Them mothers paid their them, tithes, got stuff for the pastor's family if they needed it. Man. You know, bless the pastor, slip the pastor a hundred dollars. <laughs> Not to bribe the pastor, but did God just told me to take care of whatever you need. Them mothers will pray mm -hmm. and they'll get a prayer answer before the pastor. Mm -hmm. Some of the mothers was more anointed than the pastor. Hello. Okay. Some of the mothers was more anointed than the pastor. Some of them mothers kept the church up just through their prayers alone. Some of them mothers was the prophets nobody wanted to hear, but that too. <laughs> that too. And, 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 <laughs> look, look at a lot of people we deem mothers today, right? Mm -hmm. Mother, you know, you know, uh, uh, God bless Mother Stack. She went on to be, to, to be home with the Lord. Yes. But this lady was a bona fide prophet. You could not tell me this lady was not a prophet. Right, right. Okay, you see how she flow. You see it's how she natural. Yeah, laying people out with handkerchiefs. <laughs> That's a prophet. You know, and she came from under Mother Board. Mother Board, a prophet. You know, actually, she would. If they would have really let her loose in them churches, she would. She she probably would have been an apostle. Mm hmm. Okay, I believe Mother Board was an apostle. They weren't ready for that. No, they weren't ready for that. You, you know, you know, um, a, a lot of a lot of ministers, a lot of preachers came spiritually out of her womb. I'm trying, I'm trying, trying okay. I'm not gonna get on that. But yes. the point is, the point is, these mothers didn't just pray. Mm -hmm. Okay, they they were also givers. Yes, which added the supernatural element behind their prayers for God to move quicker. That's right. Huh? On That's their right. behalf. That's right. You understand what I'm saying? And, 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 and listen, when you become a real sower, you don't let people tell you about your sowing. That's right. Okay. You don't let people tell you about your soul. I'm telling you, if you would just, you know, see, this is why. This is uh, this is why, you know, we, we, we do stuff for our leadership. We buy them stuff. You know, mm -hmm. we we sow money, we buy them stuff, and, and and all this other stuff. Why? Because there's a blessing in giving. That part. There's a blessing in giving. I'm sowing into an anointing. I'm reaping from. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? See, see, see. You can't I, buy the anointing, but no. you should sow into it. Yeah, you can't buy the anointing, but you can, but you can reap from it by sowing into it. Yes. Okay. That that that's that's, that's the thing there. You know, and um. You know this. This is why. Again, this is this 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 is another part of our secret, mm -hmm. the secret to the anointing. This one, because we're givers. Mm -hmm. You know, you 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 got to understand what money communicates. You got to understand what money and materials and and possessions and when you give that stuff, what that stuff communicates. You right. look at the early church; they came and, and and sold houses and land and laid the proceeds at the apostles' feet, mm -hmm. and the apostles was in charge of how the money was distri di distributed according to who had need. Right, that's because there was a community of people. Right. That's why the Bible says none lacked among them, and they had all things common. None lacked among them. If we could really get this principle down, mm -hmm. you understand, because the church, the early church chose not to be stingy, and they did it twice. They did it in Acts two and in Acts four. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? They did it in Acts two and in Acts four. The early church was used to giving on a big level. When the last time you sold a house? Well, I mean, sold a house. When the last time you sold a car? Hmm. <clears throat> Huh? When the last time you sold something of value mm -hmm. or the monetary equivalent of it. Right. Okay. See, we've given away vehicles. We, we can we can we can talk like this. We can talk like this. We've given away vehicles. We've paid people's bills. Huh? Glory to God. We've given okay, I've given jewelry away. Everybody know how much I love my jewelry. 
I've, I've, I've given jewelry away. So don't judge our receiving. Mm -hmm. He always talking about giving and people give to him. Yes, they do give to me and they're going to continue to give to me. You wonder why? Because I'm a giver. You, you understand what I'm saying? People wonder why, wonder why we, we receive offerings all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, God assigns people to sow into our life. We didn't do it. God did it. Mm. I'm trying to teach you how to receive, y'all. We try to teach you how to receive. This is what we're walking in. People come to us. The Lord told me to sow specifically into you. I know you want us to sow into the ministry, but God told us to sow into you. Huh? There's a point in time where you got to allow God to build your house. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says that Solomon's house and God's house was being built simultaneously, but Solomon's house was finished first. Mm -hmm. Huh? Because it took longer to build God's house. Mm. But God secured Solomon a house first before the, his house was finished. And that's in the Bible. <laughs> that's in the Bible. Some of y'all trying to build God's house. We need to build your house. Mm -hmm. huh? You need to let God build your house. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, the ministry, the, 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 so, 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 the temple was still being built. So the ministry can still grow. Mm -hmm. But you need to put more emphasis on your house mm -hmm. while God's house, because the Bible says, except the Lord builds a house, they that labor, labor in vain. Uh oh. So a certain thing with the ministry, you can't do it anyway. God got to do. And this is what happens when you become a giver. He says what? He says, I will even cause men to give unto your bosom. Mm -hmm. uh, he says, I'll cause men to give unto your bosom. Okay. I'm just waiting on somebody to sew a car. Come on. No, no, an SUV. Yeah, be specific. I, I'm, I'm waiting on somebody to sew. Be specific. Amen. I'm waiting on somebody to sew an SUV. A new one. Not a not a twenty not a not a not a, not a, a 2006. <laughs> Bless the Lord. Now let's let's get back into how, how you break this cycle. The first yes. thing you got to do is repent. You have to repent. And people have, change your mind is, is what it means. Change your mind. You've got to align your mind to agree, think, and feel about sowing and reaping the yes. same way God does. Yes. So you need to make a list of every scripture in the Bible about giving, about sowing, reaping. Read it, study it, break it out, out. Your because until your mind aligns with how God feels about it, you're not going to function the way God feels about it. Come on. Now, I mean, that goes with anything, but we're talking about giving. You've got to repent and align your mind. The next thing that you're going to have to do after you repent and align your mind is you're going to have to keep the kingdom a priority. You have to keep the kingdom a priority. And you're going to have to determine within yourself that as God has made you a sower and you're believing for him to continue to give you seed as a sower, that you're going to sow. Right. And if you are one that finds yourself in these situations, or oh, I got late fees, I forgot to pay this, I got to do this, I got to do this, you've got to go ahead and align your life. Right. Get your life in order, become responsible, figure out what else you're going to have to cut back on or cut out so that you can give. Right. So that you can give. That means some of you, you're going to have to cut back on your eating out. Come on. So, I mean, you got to cut back. Well, I don't spend. Listen, food is expensive these days, yeah. especially recently. Yeah. I don't know when the last time y'all don't look at some of these delivery services, but food is off the chains. Yeah. So if you're spending twenty dollars three, four times a week for food, that adds up. That's a lot of times more than that now because the delivery fees are going up. You notice that. So, you know, you I can guarantee most of you, you're spending a couple hundred dollars a month at least and just eating out that you don't really need to spend. Come on now. If you want to spend it, fine. I wouldn't advise it. But if you are spending that and it's like, oh, well, you know, I want to be a blessing. But, you know, just 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 I'm going to just, just bless me because I don't have it. No, you 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 had it. You You just ate it. And that's why you don't have it. You literally ate it. So you have got to align your life you've got to look at your needs versus your wants and see that is the that is where maturity comes in because some of the things 
that you have that are the reason why you can't give, you don't need them. You've got to align your priorities and then you've got to really revisit what you're doing. Honestly, every three to six months to make to look for any cracks to make sure you don't fall back into this cycle. So, yo, oh, I, I need a miracle. I need a miracle. Nothing wrong with God bless you and give you a financial miracle. But that should not be the result of your constant disobedience and hard headedness and lack of discipline. Come on. That that's it's it's a discipline issue for a lot of people. This is part of the elementary disciplines of your faith. And you can be walking with the Lord a long time, but still have not mastered all of the elementary disciplines. And and that's really what this is. We can talk more about this. We'll have to talk about this in, in a more elevated setting. Yeah. Because see, this is the key to unlock a major part of your destiny. I can tell you this in this setting. You definitely want to make sure you continue to give. And so you want to keep money in motion. You definitely want to keep it in motion because the after a while, you will begin to see so yeah. much of a harvest come back. You're not even going to miss the seed. But the problem is you don't remain consistent long enough. If you I, I want to chat, if you've never done this, listen, I want to challenge you. Stay consistent sowing for one calendar year and see how God blesses your life. Come on. Name your seed, make you a vision board of what you believe in God for, what it is that you stand in need of. And you remain consistent for a year. You'll see God will show up for you in a way that is unspeakable. Do you have any closing remarks before we close this episode? I've come across people and they've always been, they're always, they always have been discouraged in giving. Mm -hmm. um, and, but it's in their nature to be a giver. Don't stop giving. Mm -hmm. Don't stop giving. And never, to the best of your ability, never decrease your giving. Come on now. If you start sowing in the hundreds, stay in the hundreds. Mm, that's good. You start sowing in a thousand, stay there. You understand? Listen, God, you listen, I, 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 I see multiple doors just opening just at one time. Mm -hmm. Just just even as I speak prophetically, I just see doors open. Shoom, 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 shoom. There are so many different doors that God is getting ready to open for you. And some of you, God is getting ready to expedite certain things concerning you. Do you hear what I say? God is going. Mm, mm, God is going to expedite mm, 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 mm. your miracle. Come on. And some of you sold recently. I don't know where you sold. See, I'm not trying to get prophetic up here. Right, right. <laughs> but see, when it comes to seed sowing, I mean, it, it just it, it's just something about it that unlocks the prophetic. Yes. But but some of you sold recently. And I'm telling you, what God is giving to do for you in the coming weeks is going to be supernatural. Some of you, God, God is telling you to to sow a specific seed wherever He's telling you to sow it at. Okay, whatever He's telling you to sow it at. All right, and you need to sow that seed. And some of you might say, "Well, I just gave," but if He's telling you to give again, give again. Mm -hmm. See, you got to see. See, once you learn this, you won't wrestle with God about what you hear Him telling you. Yeah. Once you learn this and begin to work this discipline yeah. in your life, you'll live in constant overflow. I'm telling you, the richest people are some of the biggest givers. Mm hmm. For real. Even secular people. Even secular people. L, you know, LL Cool J said he pays his tithes and he contributes that to his success. Mm -hmm. <laughs> LJ, LL Cool J, a secular rapper, mm -hmm. artist. He said he pays his tithes. Ten percent go to God first. Okay, he pay his tithes, and that's why, and that's why he's blessed. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to tell you. So, so giving is is a discipline you must have because see, God so loved the world that he what gave. gave. Giving is proof of love. Hmm? God used Jesus as a seed. To harvest a whole family. God is the biggest giver you'll, you, you, you'll ever meet. Mm, that's good. 
So it should be in our nature to become givers too. Yes, indeed. Listen, we want to thank you for joining us on the F3 podcast. Again, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Check out the links in the description yes. box. Send us a message if you've got a show topic. And until next time on the F3 podcast, goodbye.